Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Vantage Seminar. So we're continuing with our series of talks on Bailey Maps and Hurwitz Spaces. And today, I'm very happy to have the speaker, Arena Bao, who will be talking about Bailey Maps in Positive Characteristic. And um, Arena, is it all right for us to video this talk? Yeah, sure, fine. Oh, great. All right, well, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the invitation. So, well, actually this is a continuation in some sense of the previous talks, but it can be uh, listened to independently also. So let me just start by a quick recall of what we have seen already basically in every talk that we had that has been in this series so far. So a Bailey map, well, over any, for simplicity, let's assume that your field is algebraically closed and it's just an arbitrary algebraically closed field. And a Bailey map is just any cover uh, between a, a smooth projective curve X and a projective line, which is unramified outside three points, which you may assume to be zero, one and infinity. So we have all seen basically in, many of the previous talks that if, if the field has characteristics zero, then we can give a, an easy combinatorical description of these uh, Bailey maps, namely such uh, the, the Bailey maps up to isomorphism are in one-to-one -one correspondence with the following, which we could say uh, combinatorical data. There's a triple of permutations in S, SD, where D is the degree of the cover. I think I forgot to say this. So we have three permutations, sigma one, sigma zero, sigma infinity. And they satisfy the property that the product is one and the, the group that they generate, the subgroup of SD that they generate is a transitive subgroup on, on D letters. And these are up to uniform conjugacy. And so these, um, yeah, if one has such a triple and then it is uh, the, this, these, these elements they describe the ramification over zero, one, and infinity. And so, in principle, if one we if we fix such a such a, a combinatorial data, we have seen this. Sometimes it was also called in the previous talk a um, a portrait when the group this group generated by the sigma i was also fixed. But for this talk, I leave out the group. So if we now fix these combinatorial data and we d the degree and this the triple of conjugacy classes given by these permutations in SD. That's just corresponds to a, per, uh, a, per, uh, a partition of our D letters. Then we can, I mean, in principle, one can count the number of covers of this, I call this a type. And well, we've seen that this, uh, I, yeah, I, I'm going to write this, this, uh, this, this number, the number of such covers of this given combinatorial type. I'm just call it H zero D comma lambda, where lambda is this uh, set of conjugacy classes or partitions of D. And um, what is just, and we've seen that in the talk of John Foyt, he explained us how the idea of this result. And so it was a completely, uh, a topological thing. It just this depends on a description of the topological fundamental group. So this is really a description that only works in characteristic zero. And now the, the question that I want to discuss: Can we give a similar description of such Bailey maps in positive characteristics? So if I tell, if you, I fix you some combinatorial data similar to the the one that I gave before, which basically describes the degree of the cover and the ramification over th the three points, then can I get a similar combinatorial description or maybe um, just a, a formula from I mean, counting some set, can I, um, can, it, yeah, can I, by counting some set, can I give a, like a formula for the number of covers with this given type? Okay, so let's let's look at the situation for characteristic P. And actually, there's two completely different cases in positive characteristic. So the first case is what I call. So we have now P is the characteristics. We're we're working over say an algebraically closed field of positive characteristic, and we're still considering covers of P one only branched at above zero, one, and infinity. So in the wild case is when the characteristic P divides at least one of these ramification indices of the ramification points above one of the three points. 
And while this is actually completely, in this situation, the, the situation is completely different from what we have seen in character 6.0. And this already can be seen from the easiest example in some sense in the case of art and trier covers. So if we consider a smooth projective curve X given by the affine equation X to the P minus X is T to the H. Um, well, then of course, mapping just the, 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 the pair X comma T to the T defines a cover of the projective line. And in fact, it's only it's easy to see that it's only branched above infinity. So, and, and if one computes the, the genus of these covers, they have actually for every H, uh, which is uh, prime to P, the genus is, is different. So this means that all these covers for every value of H prime to P, one gets a different, a non-isomorphic uh, curve. And so it means that the number of covers with this fixed ramification data, if you want to degree P and only one totally branched above infinity, this number is already infinite. infinite. So um, yeah, I mean, that's in some sense, it's a completely different question. And, and this question of counting covers Bailey maps uh, in positive characteristic with uh, fixed ramification in some sense, well, it, it it doesn't make too much sense in some in some sense and because the, well you see that as soon as you have this wild ramification the number is infinite is is infinite in general, so that's why we are uh, we'll focus in the talk on a tame case and this means that uh, p does not divide any of the ramification indices of i, and in fact here we can use uh, the same sort of combinatorial data just fixing the degree of the cover and this. Uh, this, what I call the type, this combinatorial type, which just tabulates the, the ramification indices over zero, one, infinity. And then in fact, well, you see that the, the situation is completely different because now I call this H, I call this HP of this, oops, sorry, HP of this type D comma lambda, there is still a finite number I, I, I'm a bit more precise on the notation afterwards. And it's actually less than or equal to the number of covers that we had in character zero. That's this number H zero D comma lambda. And the reason just, I mean, this is a well-known result. It goes back to SJ one. And it means the reason is that every tame cover um, can be lifted, let's say Galois cover, can be lifted to a cover of the same time in character six zero. So, um, well, it, this means that, well, every cover corresponds to a unique cover. Every cover in characteristic P corresponds to a unique cover in characteristic zero. But there may be also other covers in characteristic zero that have bad reduction in some sense. That, that's sort of the idea. And that's actually a technique that I'm going to focus on. So from now on, we're going to consider tame Bailey maps in, in positive characteristic and try to see, can we, at least in what kind of cases, can we find some way of co counting these in terms of um, in terms of by the, uh, uh, some combinatorical description? And I just um, well, I just start with the, the the very easy case where in the case where the degree of the map is strictly less than p, then in fact the number of covers uh, in positive characteristic with the same. Um, with a fixed ramification type is the same as the number of covers in characteristic zero. So here in this case, if D is strictly less than P, then actually the same description still holds that we saw before, the same com combinatorical description. Well, and, and, and roughly speaking, the reason is that if we have, well, we, if we pass, no, we, we, for these Bailey maps, we have seen ex many examples in the previous talks, and I come back to examples in a minute. We have seen that um, many of them can be given by such an explicit uh, equation, and many of them, they were like non galois covers, but you can, of course, always pass through the Galois closure. And um, then in this case, if the, the, the Galois group of the Galois closure, which is this group G, uh, generated by our permutations, sigma, and this is still the, the genus uh, zero, uh, the characteristic zero description. Now the group 
generated by our three permutations from our combinatorial description, this is, has order prime to p. And it's known that then every such cover has good reduction to characteristic p. So we already saw before the number of such covers is um, less than or equal to in characteristic p is less than or equal to uh, those in characteristic zero. But from this result, it's actually the number is actually the same. And I want to just say one word on what I mean by this good reduction of this Galois covers. And so we have our Bailey map, I call it phi. Um, and uh, it's just a cover of my curve X to P1. And this may be non uh, Galois, but now, um, um, well, I'm passing to the Galois closure of this cover. And this is a Galois cover with um, the Galois group G that I introduced before. And well, for, for simplicity, I mean, there's just a few special cases where the genus of um, X, uh, Y of the Galois closure is strictly less than uh, two. And let's just ignore them for now, but they can be also be treated in a similar way. So, and then what I can do, I can pass, it's defined over a number field to cover, but I can just pass to the localization and may assume and consider my curve C over a local field of mixed characteristic P. And okay, now we have this, now we have a good uh, theory of what it means for my curve Y to have good reduction. It means that it, good reduction now means that possibly after extending my local field K, I have a smooth model curly Y over the localization of the local, the, 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 the ring of integers on my, of my field K. And yeah, I mean, this is just, if you want to think about, say that you have an equation for your curve Y, it just means really an equation such that if you reduce it modulo with coefficients in your ring of integers, and if I reduce this equation modulo P, it's still smooth. And now this uh, an interesting result is that this smooth model in this case, it's, it's unique up to isomorphism. And so this means that the Galois group, it, 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 it still acts on our model and we can take a quotient and we obtain a smooth model of my projective line. And then I can just take the special fiber of this um, smooth model. And in this case, uh, you can show that this is actually still a Galois cover and the, the ramification type is still the same. So this, this, this is sort of the, I mean, these are the steps that you have to take to prove this result that in the case that D is strictly less than P, the, the number of covers in positive characters is actually the same as the one in CAP six zero. But actually the, way, the reason why I explain this is this is one, this is like the usual way of thinking of reduction of covers, of Galois covers. This is like the approach that you would take in algebraic geometry. But now actually to, um, I'm going to, reduced to a very special case where actually you can use a much more naive way uh, and, and easier to think of way of um, doing this reduction, explaining what it means to talk about reduction, which is really just in some sense, taking a polynomial with coefficients in Z and reducing all the coefficients modulo P. And the interesting thing is that in at least in this special case that I'm going to talk about now, this is actually the same thing. Okay, so this is a, a, a special case that we saw, saw already in the talk of Aslam Eider in the same seminar. And this is what I call the genus zero single cycle case. So let's, um, let's set up this notation. So we fix a degree and we fix this, what I called lambda before, this, this is part of this combinatorial type. So this lambda consists of three conjugacy classes in SD, which are called C1, uh, C0, C1, C infinity. And actually I, I assume that each of these um, conjugacy classes are the conjugacy class of a single cycle. And so in terms of our covers, this just means that um, I'm just going to see if this if this works. Maybe it, it works. Uh, it, it seems to work. Okay. So um, 
sorry, I'm just trying to see if this works. Oh, it works. Wow, it's, it still works. Oh, I can write. This is much better. Okay, so in terms of these covers, no, so, so um, this just means that we, where we have these are three ramification points, zero, one, and infinity. And, um, and actually we have one ramification points over each of the, I just like to draw it like this. Over each of the of the branch points, we have a unique ramification points, and in um, and in um, yeah, and we will see that actually um, we will even impose a normalization condition. Namely, we will each of the the the, the, the ramification the unique ramification point over zero, we choose the coordinate on the upper genus zero such that this, this one is zero and over one, we have one ramification point reaches one over infinity, one is infinity. And I mean, this genus zero condition, it just translates to this uh, condition on the ramification in this. So let me repeat. So we assume that, yeah. okay, yeah, I shouldn't, shouldn't have erased this. Yeah, so we have here one point. And this uh, three indices EI, they're just the order of this ramification, of the three ramification indices. Okay. That was not good. Now that I did this, I cannot. I, sorry, I'm having a slight problem. I need to, okay, it's now. Oh no, no, I cannot. Sorry, I'm, I'm having a technical problem. That's not good. Now it doesn't want to, I managed now to write on it, which I thought it didn't work, but now I cannot um, switch to the next page anymore. No, ah, oh, okay, now it works. It seems to work. Okay, so now the interesting thing about this case is that actually, um, if we compute the number of covers with this uh, combinatorial type in characteristic zero, now this was this number that I denoted by H zero and then the combinatorial type, this is one. I mean, we saw this also, this was mentioned in the talk of John Voigt, the first talk in the series, this is what we call a rigid triple. So that's actually, this is a, that's actually one thing that's particularly nice about this case is that the number of covers in characteristic zero is just, um, is just uh, one. And so from the result that we saw before, we have either there exists a cover and positive characteristic. Now, if we reduce to a characteristic that doesn't divide these EIs, then either there exists a cover or it doesn't. And so, so it's like a zero one answer. So it's counting is a bit easier. And here's a very nice uh, uh, result of Brian Osserman. And he gives a combinatorial description of the number of these covers uh, in characteristic P in the tame genus zero case. So in this case, but assuming that P does not divide the, the EIs. And actually what he what he uses, he uses the language of linear systems. And in, so, in some sense, what he, he his uh, result may be formulated as follows. It, um, it says, well, there exists such a, a separate map, a Bailey map of this type, if and only if there doesn't exist an inseparable map. And so actually the, the, in some sense, what he does is he says, okay, yeah, we can actually, if we take this point of view of reduction, which is actually not the point of view that he takes, but I like to formulate it like this. We, have our un we know we have a unique covering characteristic zero. We have a notion of, which I'll explain in a minute, of reducing this modulo P. And well, you can actually say if it's if it has bad reduction, you get an inseparable map, and you can exactly uh, this give a combinatorial description of this to happen. So you need, just need to check does there exist um, an inseparable map with a specified ramification, whatever that means, and if it doesn't exist, then there exists such a Bailey map, and if it does, then not. So, so let me just explain this in an example. So we look now at the at this um, the Bailey maps of um, 
degree D. D is an arbitrary uh, number such that over zero, we have a ramification, uh, a unique ramification points with index D minus one. Over one, we have a double ramification and over infinity, it's uh, totally ramified. We already saw this example in, um, in uh, a slam stock. And actually the special case D is three, it occurred I think in every uh, in every talk so far that we had in this series, so it is like a nice thing to start. And so now, really, what I mean by um, by reduction is really what you think. You see here, I have written this uh, the equation of this cover, and um, well, it has coefficients in z. And now, of course, for every p, we can just reduce it modulo p, and see what it, what happens. Okay, so let's just do it. The first case is, uh, well, the first case is if P divides D. I mean, then it definitely, it, it, it divides the P divides the rest, the characteristic divides the ramification index into infinity. And, and so, well, it should have bad reduction because that it's not, it does, it, there cannot be a tame curve. So it should have bad reduction. And of course, if you just look at the equation, it's obvious that it happens. Um, yeah, so now what happens if P divides D, let me see if this works. Okay, then of course, um, yeah, this term vanishes and um, well, we just have uh, X to the D, which is uh, since P divides D, this is an inseparable map. And actually uh, this result of Osserman said that we could, I mean, it, it tells you that this is an inseparable map which satisfies that it has at least this ramification. And now I want to tell you what this, what this means. It just it amounts to that this map here, this X to the D, if you consider it in characteristic P or P divides D, you can, you can write a D as well, a power of P times an integer D prime, which is uh, relatively prime to, uh, to P. And then you just need to check while well, you just look at this map and you, you, you see over zero, one infinity. How, what, is, what is the ramification index? Of course, it doesn't make sense because it's totally ramified, but every point has this P to the end. This, this, uh, I mean, you can factor the map as a totally, uh, a purely inseparable map and a separable part. And it's actually just the, the ramification in this, this EI bars that I've written here. You should interpret them interpret them as follows. They're just p to the n times the ramification index of the separable part, and then they should satisfy these inequalities that the this ei bars the ramification index at uh, in in characteristic p. There should be greater than or equal to the ramification index that we get in uh, in characteristic zero. So we in this case there exists an inseparable map which satisfies these conditions, which I don't want to go too much in detail. And it means, okay, it means that the, there does not exist such a cover with this, with this specified ramification. Okay, I have to do this again. No. That's, okay, let me see if it works again. Yeah. Okay. Okay, now the, the next case is where uh, P divides D minus one. And also in this case, you can do with a similar kind of, uh, you see, you can either look at this equation and reduce the coefficients modulo P or apply this method of Osserman. I mean, it's just the method of Osserman that gives you the same thing and you see, okay, well, there exists an inseparable map which satisfies the condition. And therefore, I mean, this, this is just a reducing this modulo P and therefore not a separable thing. And in all other cases, um, there exists a separable case. I mean, in this case, it just corresponds to the case, uh, it, there exists a separable map of the same type, if and only if P does not divide the ramification indices, but that's just in the special case, that's not always the case. You know? So the conclusion in this case is, well, there exists a separable map with this, um, with this combinatorial type, if and only if the, there doesn't exist inseparable and that X and there, the separable map, the inseparable exists if and only if P divides either D or D minus one. Okay. 
So that, that's sort of the setup here with two proofs. No? So the, the, the direct proof and the, the proof with this approach of Osserman. So you see in this case, you can really use this very stupid approach of if you know the equation in correct six zero, you can just really reduce it modulo P and then you get, if this is a separable map of the, then it's really the thing that you want. That's an interesting thing. Um, of course, this, this depends on this setup that we, that we have taken, that we have single cycles, that it's genus zero, and um, that we have normalized our cover in the way that I did, and where the ramification indices are, the ramification points are zero, one, infinity, mapping to, that's, that's also important. Okay, so just a few remarks why this approach works really, not just in this special case where we have an explicit equation, but it really works for such an arbitrary uh, map of this type with these conditions. So suppose that we have such an arbitrary Bailey map with these conditions, genus zero, single cycle, and normalized, normalized as before. Then you can show that actually it, it's in general, not just a polynomial, but could be a rational function if this is not totally ramified at infinity, but you can, um, it, it has of it, it you can can write it as a rational function with coefficients in z, just like in the example. And then, I mean, it still could happen that reducing modulo p uh, gives something constant, but that doesn't happen. It's non-constant, so you can just take these coefficients of this of the rational function and really reduce the coefficients modulo p and get something. And then. It's non-constant, and if it's separable, then it's really a Bailey, a Bailey map of the same type that you started with, and the thing has good reduction. And otherwise, you get something inseparable, yeah, like in the examples that we saw. And so this this gives you, and this gives you a method for 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 doing it using this um, using if you have such an equation, you know. But even knowing that this method. Uh, Knowing that this method works, that you can do it like this, you, you can also compute this number of separable covers, number of covers, um, just not, without knowing this equation, you can just do it by just counting the number of inseparable covers that may occur, like I saw, in, like, like I explained a little bit in the example. This is just a, 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 a sample, um, yeah, just one sample of, um, of, um, of the thing that can happen. This is basically a special case of the result of Osserman. And what's new, what, what I did with my co-authors um, is really uh, a little bit more. We just, we just did this interpretation with stable reduction and uh, worked it out a little. Uh, I mean, this, this interpretation with exactly being able to, to say what the type is. It's just, it's just a sample of, of see what kind of things you can do. So we're still looking here at genus zero Bailey maps of the, of, which are single cycle and which are normalized in the, in the way that I discussed before. And well, it's, as you can see, we just really choose such an arbitrary type here. And um, yeah. So um, we, as, as before, we can, we can write D as P to the N D prime. I mean, in this case, uh, P does not have to divide it, uh, the D. And then we get here in this case. So we just look at one possible, ins oh yeah, no, no, we are just looking at the case where P divides D and we're looking at one possible inseparable map that can occur. And we say, okay, well, this case, this inseparable map, it occurs if and only if this condition E1 is less than or equal to p to the power n if this occurs, if this holds. And of course, in, 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 in principle, if this d is not a pure p power, like in the example we had before, there could be many possible um, uh, inseparable maps and you have to look over all of them to get your answer. But here we just look at one special type. No? So this is, this, is the, this is basically Osserman's result. I mean, he didn't look at it in the context of reduction like I presented it here. He did it purely in characteristic P, but the, okay, why did I write? Okay, yeah, yeah, so, I mean, this, this uh, yeah. I, this is just one, one example 
he did it purely in terms of character P not in, not in the way I wrote it here, but if you if you write it down, if you work in this language, then this is exactly what you can. It is actually a result that we did in the in, in the context of uh, arithmetic dynamics, where we were looking at the dynamical system it uh, obtained by iterating this uh, fee. And then actually, if you know such a specific kind of, um, of reduction, even if it's inseparable, then this gives you information on the pre-periodic points of the dynamical systems. I mean, I don't want to go into details here. I just want to show, show that even if it doesn't have a good reduction, there may be other uh, applications like such an application in terms of dynamical systems. But as I showed before, this can be, uh, can be interpreted also in terms of good reduction. So now what happens if we don't, we are not in this um, pure, in this single cycle case. So here, just to, to look at an example, let's, let's look at a little bit more complicated type. So it's still genus zero for simplicity. So I'm looking now at covers of degree five. I didn't want to do that. Looking at covers of degree five, so that over zero, we have two ramification points, one of, uh, index two and one of index three. However, one I have a ramific one ramification point of order three and over infinity I have a ramification point of ramification index four. And you can, I mean, by any method you can show that in Greg six zero we actually have two different covers. I mean, I, I wrote them down here, I computed them down here. And you see, I, I've even, um, I've done it in such a way that this point is still zero, this point, the, the ramification points with the ramification index are still zero, one infinity. But we have um, here, we have this alpha, which is the ramification point over zero with ramification index two. And this beta is the unramified point over infinity. And if you do it like this, then you can actually um, you can you can actually find this equation. And you see from here, well, we have here you see the two possibilities for beta, and you see also that the curve is not defined over um, Q. It's it's not a rigid triple. We have two possibilities, and it's actually they are defined over a quadratic extension. No, 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 no. No? Okay, now we have this problem again. Yeah, I'm not complete. Okay, sorry for this uh, confusion. So now let's just see what happens in characteristic P. I mean, P is the only relevant prime that's interesting because you see, uh, well, two and three, they divide the ramification indices. And if the, the degree is five, so every prime larger than five, it has good reduction automatically. So the only interesting prime is five. And actually, um, yeah, if you do this same calculation, or if you just reduce all these things modulo five, you see that um, we have a unique separable map. And there's also a unique inseparable map, maybe x to the power five, if you check. Some variants you might, the, the result of Osserman doesn't apply, but you could try to interpret these results in a similar way and then see what happens. I mean, you, in some sense, if you look at this uh, number of possibilities, here you see this, this uh, one of the, the this, you have two solutions for beta. One reduces to beta is two, which is, you see here. And um, well, the other one is reduced to infinity. There actually, you cannot just, uh, plug in infinity in some sense and reduce. It doesn't make sense, but at least it makes plausible that there is like one inseparable uh, cover here. So, well, you could say that, well, maybe you can still do this kind of counting that we did for the Osserman case, interpret this uh, inseparable maps, which can occur as the, as the reduction of this case. And well, um, together with uh, Brian Osserman, I have proved, uh, I, actually this was a, a, a lemma that we did to prove something else, but it doesn't matter so much. Actually, you can prove a result for covers of these types. Uh, there are some conditions on the EIs that I don't want to listen. It just, I mean, we can basically do all these, all these cases. So we look at covers of degree P. We have two ramification points above zero. 
one ramification point above infinity, one, uh, one over one and one over infinity. And we still have this genus zero condition. But here I put some additional things because actually there, the number depends on some conditions and there are several cases and I just listed up one condition. So, so the, the conditions that are here are just the, the genus of X is zero and one of the cases that may occur. And okay, so you can still actually compute the number of covers in characteristic zero by just looking at the number of permutations or by doing this explicit method that I did before, but this actually we did by doing this description with the permutations that I showed you by just counting the permutations, the possibilities for the permutations that we saw on the first slide. And you get actually an expression, which doesn't look so bad. And we also prove the number of covers in characteristic P. And you see, well, these two, uh, the first two expressions are P plus one minus E1 minus E2 is actually uh, positive because this, uh, this is so at least one, this first term. And then there is another term, this minimum in x six zero, which is at least two. And we exclude the case where this E1 is, is one. So this, this term here is at least, this term here is at least two. So that's, uh, that's fine. Good. So, um, yeah, so you see the number of um, covers of this type in characteristic P, it's always positive and it's always strictly less than the number of covers in characteristic zero. And actually we proved it by a completely different method than what I explained before. It's not proven by Osserman's method, just finding the, um, just counting the number of inseparable covers in some certain way and then saying, okay, the number of covers in characteristic P is the number in characteristic zero minus the inseparable covers. And just, I mean, this was still true in the previous example, but not in this case. And here, here I've just uh, done a different example with degree seven and reducing it to characteristic seven. So fix some, num some ramification in this. And actually, so in this case, we have four covers in characteristic zero and two covers, two separable covers in characteristic seven, but there's only one inseparable cover. So the number of inseparable cover maps and the number of separable maps, it, it doesn't add up to the number in characteristic zero like what we had before. So we had to do more complicated, um, a more complicated counting. And actually what we have to do is count in some sense, I mean, this inseparable, map, it can still occur in some sense as a reduction of covers in correct six zero, but you should count it with multiplicity two in, an, in, in some uh, useful setting of reduction, which I'm not going to explain in this uh, setup. It means that there are two, cup, two of the four covers in correct six zero specialized to the same inseparable map. So there's some, and now you see that that's a limitation of the method, this method of Brian Osserman, which just works by counting in characteristic P. It cannot explain, or I mean, at least I don't see how you can use it directly to find this multiplicity with which this things you, which you have to count. We didn't have the, the, this problem before where the number of covers in, we were, uh, in characteristic zero was just one and it either exists or it doesn't exist. So what did we do here just to give an indication? Yes, I'm almost done. Well, we, we um, basically here we used, um, we passed to the Galois closure and there is, an, a, a, there is a method of stable reduction for these Galois covers, which is similar to this notion of re good reduction that I explained before, but then with bad reduction. And um, so you can, there is a results of Stefan Bevers, which just tell you, how could these reductions look like? But it also tells you, you know, not only what are the possibilities for the bad reduction for the inseparable case, but it also explains this, this multiplicity. So for, for this uh, situation, what we, what we have to do, uh, we, need, we need this more, I mean, I, I, I know how to do it using this stable reduction of GAWA covers, but not using this very, uh, basic or this method of, of an awesome. So let me just sum up in the last minute. 
So if we want to prove like existence results or counting the number of Bailey maps, tame Bailey maps in positive characteristic, of course, we can still use like the direct method, which we saw among other things in the talk of Sam, uh, by just, well, finding which polynomials or rational functions or do it. The second method that we saw is this Osserman's method used by which in the formulated the language of this linear series. And this basically, we know how it works in the genus zero single cycle case. And we get this, um, well, we get this expression for the number of covers in characteristic P. It's just the number of covers in characteristic zero, which happens to be one minus this inseparable ones, which either zero or one. And then the second thing is this uh, me method using the results of Stefan Bevers using stable reduction of Galois covers. This actually just uh, in this setup, uh, we know how it works if P strictly divides the Galois group. So if P squared does not divide the order of the Galois group, or if you want the degree is between P uh, larger than or equal to P and strictly less to P squared. And then we get still su such a formula that the number of covers in characteristic P is the number of covers in characteristic zero minus a contribution coming from the batch reduction. But in this case, yeah, we, there's this, comp there's this, um, there's this multiplicity that one has to prove uh, with my to count. And yeah, in this case that I showed you, you can actually do it. There are some other cases where you can actually do it, but uh, yeah, it, it, but it has this, uh, this has this restriction that P squared should not divide the order of the GABA group. And actually in the case where both methods uh, uh, are apply, you can actually understand how this relates. So it's, that's actually no mysterious. So that's uh, the, the summary of my talk. In some sense, I, if, you, um, if you want to count covers in characteristic P, it's uh, an, a nice method to do it is via reduction. You can count, um, you just count inseparable maps in some sense and then compared to the resulting characteristic zero. And then it gives you the, the number of covers, tame covers in characteristic P. But of course you see there's still lots of limitations, lots of things to understand. So a nice combinatorical expression like we had in characteristic zero, we're still very far from proving. Thank you.